I pretty much had all my videos mapped out in advance for this year, even with the weekly video schedule I've been doing in 2022. Some changes have been made along the way, but still. One thing that was on my list was the silver release of Sonic P06, a full remake of Sonic 06 done in Unity. If you watched my Being a Happy Sonic Fan in 2021 video, you'd know that last year's Shadow release was something I was quite pleased by. In the time since, I've played it for like 200 hours and I've gotten invested in speedrunning it, modding it, and everything else you can think of. Why am I telling you this? That's because I just wrote in my schedule I'd be doing the new version around this time, however, it's not out yet. I'd never want to rush perfection, so I'm fine with waiting a little longer to get that, since I know it'll be more than worth it once the time comes. You can follow ChaosX on Twitter to get all the latest updates in the project. Silver release is truly looking like it's going to put Shadow release to shame. But anyway, as the early days of October approached, I thought to myself, what will I do now that the thing I wanted to do isn't done yet? Well, I figured I could give my brief thoughts on other Sonic fan games to fill the gap. Some interesting ones were fully finished just this year, and so I decided it was worth some recognition. Sonic's fan content being something I've consistently praised throughout my retrospective, after all, whether that be fan games, fan projects that set out to enhance existing games, or mods that do the same thing. Sonic fans have done a lot in terms of creating memorable experiences with our favorite characters. To Sega's credit, they allow this to go on as long as the games don't seek to turn a profit on their IP, truly allowing passion and creativity to drive these teams. I can't cover every Sonic fan game, although I suppose it's something I could dedicate a video series to someday. What I'm doing here is just going to briefly give my thoughts on some of the fan games released in the past few months as a way of holding people over for the Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric video that's dropping next week. So let's start with the one that probably got you to click on this video, Sonic Omens. I really didn't want to talk about this game. In fact, I was considering making this very video a few months back when these games came out, but I dropped the idea after playing Omens. But I figured I'd give my two cents in this dead horse subject simply because so many people wanted my thoughts on it since I'd apparently enjoy it. Keep in mind, I had never played any of the previous demos for this game, going into it blind for the final chapter's release that dropped in August. To be blunt, fan game or not, Sonic Omens is one of the most frustrating experiences I've had with the game in a long time. First level or two were fine, but I mostly chalked that up to the fan engine it was made on rather than the game itself, as I did enjoy the skydive boosting the engine has at default. But then when it came to what Omens did that was unique, I just hated it. In the main stages, you just have an abundance of do-or-die platforming that gives you little time to react to what's going on around you, quickly devolving into trial and error as levels will balloon in length. Introducing gimmicks that further enrage the player, like traveling up a tree for a stage or quick-stepping through a vertical wall where you can barely see what's coming, and if you mess up, you have to go back to the checkpoint immediately. The game also has these boss encounters that are utter chaos, as things are happening all over the screen that you can barely predict, and it's just miserable. The final boss being the worst example is this camera doesn't even focus on the enemy you're trying to dodge. Imagine Silver in Sonic 06, but he's flailing attacks at you left and right and holding onto rings is a required mechanic. Every boss was a major bottleneck for me when I played this game, but none of that compared to the tornado stages that would go on for an eternity. The first one has this boss fight that's an utter bullet sponge that you have to redo in its entirety if you die, and the last one takes over half an hour to complete as a result of instant death attacks and enemies. It's... not pleasant. And that's been the vibe of this game from the very beginning. When it finally released two months back, it was unearthed how the game was made by some real sketchy characters. A master document was created and posted to Twitter highlighting the various things that went on behind the scenes like developers dismissing criticism, being rude and unprofessional to the people who did the voices for the game, and some stuff I'd rather not mention in this PG YouTube video. But again, that's how it's been with this game for ages. It being a whole scandal in the fan base last year as the developers opened a Patreon, establishing a profit motive to keep making the game. It's just endless drama and I wanted nothing to do with it. So yeah, I thought it was highly unpleasant through and through for anyone who wanted my opinion on this. I also wanted to use this opportunity to clarify for people who might not know this about me, but I never asked for a cringy fanfic story about Chris Thorndike and the Metarex from Sonic X being connected to Dark and Light Gaia from Sonic Unleashed. I have wanted nothing in particular besides a cool action-adventure story that feels like a next-gen game while also not being a rushed piece of crap. That's my singular desire from Sonic. If you want to criticize the 2000 Sonic diehards who touted Omens as the savior of Sonic before it was even done, fine, just leave me out of it. I'm not a participant in the Sonic Twitter culture war anymore. I love and loathe Sonic games from every era. So let us move on from that subject, as despite the search engine optimized title of this video, I want to stay positive. Another fan game that came out around the same time as Omens was Sonic Triple Trouble 16-bit, which is what the name implies. It's a full-on remake of Sonic Triple Trouble, which first released on the Game Gear back in the 90s. A fan team led by Noah Copeland, who I'll link below, had worked hard for a long time to produce a Sega Genesis-style remake of this Game Gear classic. 
I love seeing this kind of stuff, like how full 8-bit versions of Mega Man 7 and 8 got done by fans, or how 16-bit versions of Mega Man 4 through 6 are also in the works by a passionate fan team. The Triple Trouble remake going above and beyond to deliver a memorable experience for fans of all kinds. Right from the start, you have a bunch of different options to choose from, like the aspect ratio of the game and the frame rate and the special stages if you really want to get that Genesis feel out of it. The game just felt like an authentic sequel to Sonic 3 and Knuckles. There are only two campaigns in this, a Sonic and Tails campaign and a Knuckles campaign that's unlocked after beating the first one. While this is technically less than Sonic 3K, it makes up for it in what new features it provides. Sonic and Tails are teamed up like always, but this time you can freely swap between them with the press of a button. So say you want to use the drop dash for a quick burst of speed, then you use Sonic, but if you want to navigate some platforming with a little more ease, you switch to Tails for that. I guess this isn't truly new for Sonic as it was first seen in Sonic Mania's Encore mode, but in general I think it's something more Sonic games should embrace in their campaigns, as these characters have such variety in their abilities it would be really fun to use. How games like Knuckles' Chaotix or Sonic Advance 3 didn't think of this is mystifying as this game with its simple application of the idea really sold me on it. I'd say Mania did, but I never actually played Mania Encore mode for longer than like 5 minutes, so I had to go back to see if that was a thing there before writing this. As I was saying, the game is a lot of fun. All the levels from the original game are here and accounted for, with some new segments added to keep you guessing on what's coming. The levels from the OG game aren't just 16-bit reskins of their original versions either, they're beautifully done over with new and exciting set pieces like the iconic Sunset Park Act 3 train segment being done from scratch into a much more exciting bit of gameplay that ends with the boss you remember or the mountain snowboard scene in Robotnik Winter Zone, each level hosting fast-paced gameplay and exploration that's worthy of standing alongside the Genesis games. They're also filled to the brim with references fans of the older games would get. The game really had it all for me. It provided a decent challenge in my first playthrough, and I had a lot of fun playing it a second time as Knuckles. The soundtrack was fantastic through and through with both new compositions and remixes of tracks you've heard before, also including a bunch of references to older Sonic tracks in the composition. It had fun, new special stages, and a cool story. One of the things I really liked about the Genesis era games was how they each found ways of escalating the set pieces in intensity with each and every game. Triple Trouble 16-bit really capturing that feeling with new playable characters and varied boss encounters with different characters and even including some twists to the experience you wouldn't expect in the first run. I almost don't want to spoil it since I think every Sonic fan owes it to themselves to give this a shot. It's a lot of fun. Fully realizing a game that was quite special on Game Gear. The original Triple Trouble was the first time I felt like one of the handheld games was trying to capture the character and energy of the console games, as it introduced a new character and knack, as well as bringing back Knuckles and Metal Sonic to all fight Sonic. Doing its best to include cool power-ups like the snowboard to make the experience feel like it had that same energy of the Genesis ones, like I said. It's a game that had a really interesting concept, it was just unfortunately a Game Gear game which meant it was held back in the way a console game would never be. So I'm glad that this team of talented folks allowed these concepts to shine. A real winner this one is. Originally I was just going to leave it there, however this year we also got access to Sonic and the Fallen Star, another 2D Sonic fan game. I didn't have much in terms of expectations for this one because I never heard of it before it came out, so I didn't know what to expect from it. However, after playing it the other day for this video, I was very impressed with the work. It's not often when I play a 2D Sonic game for the first time that I find its levels have a really good flow to them. What I mean is that when I usually play a 2D Sonic game for the first time, I might spend a lot of time crashing into things that kill the flow you'd expect in a Sonic game. The challenge really is that you learn the levels and can therefore achieve that flow through skill. I guess in that sense you could say Fallen Star is easier than the actual classic games, but I didn't find that to be a bad thing as each level came with platforming elements unique to it and an across the board roster of great and distinct bosses that were really well designed in terms of their attacks while being well telegraphed at the same time. Nothing felt unfair in this game, it was a smooth experience through and through. The game gave me everything I'd want in a new 2D Sonic game from an artistic standpoint. It used the Genesis games as a starting point but not merely trying to be 16-bit, instead having a more illustrative approach to its art design. Each level being a unique concept not yet tapped into by the main Sonic games, like a train track on the beach side, the shopping district, a greenhouse, and a carnival in a volcano. I thought every level was beautiful to look at and fun to play its animation being an absolute highlight. Sonic himself has the same moveset he did in Sonic Mania pretty much, but they added a ton of details to make the moves pop. Sonic Mania, as I'll say in the upcoming review, looked beautiful already, but this game just blew me away with its detail, like Sonic curling into the ball form before a drop dash, or how the peel-out looks so chaotic compared to its original form in Sonic CD, really selling the speed factor. In general, the animation is great in this, as springs have this squash and stretch to them, or how stages are bookended with these cool cutscenes of Sonic and Tails doing something acrobatic. Telling a story entirely without dialogue, but making me compelled purely with visuals. The soundtrack being pure bliss in the eardrums as well, exactly what you'd hope for in a Sonic game. 
Sonic and the Fallen Star is right up there with Triple Trouble 16-bit and that I think it's a must play for any Sonic fan. It's one that, like I said, I didn't know what to expect from it besides it being 2D and I just found a game that was supremely original in its levels and ideas and incredibly polished all around, and it's entirely free. I don't have much to say in closing in this video other than I'm glad I included this game in the video and generally glad I made it because I don't think I'd have played this one if I didn't. I'll leave links in the description for both Triple Trouble and Fallen Star, as I think you should play them both if you want to kill an afternoon in a fun 2D Sonic romp. And heck, you might get a couple of afternoons out of it replaying them both to find all their hidden secrets and unlockables. I'll also leave a link to PO6, of course, because it's the most based Sonic action I've ever played. How could I not show for it at every opportunity I get? As mentioned a moment ago, I don't have much else to add for this video, so in closing, I'll say that if you liked this Sonic fan games grab bag type video, do let me know. I'd make more of them in the future if you did, because I think it'd be fun to cover more of these in the future as more Sonic fan content inevitably comes out. But that's all the time we have for today, so I'll say... Next week, we're continuing the Sonic retrospective proper with Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric. Not gonna lie, not really looking forward to it as I've never even beaten that game before for reasons I can explain then, so I hope to see you then. And I also hope to see everyone for my coverage of the silver release of PO6. Did I mention I'm excited for that? I did? Well, the rule of three dictated that I had to mention it by name a third time, so there you go. Having said that, I'll end the video on the same note I always do. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.